I've been here in Washington State for 31 years, and one of the things that's impressed me and, and, uh, with regard to milk production here in the state is we, the, the cows here tend to have some of the highest milk production per cow in the whole U.S. Now there's areas of the U.S. which have a lot more total milk production because they have a lot more cows, but the productivity per cow here is, is quite high. And for us in Washington State and here in the Northwest uh, part of the United States compared to the Southeast or the Southwest, we have uh, temperatures throughout the year which are much more friendly to the cow. And I think that's pretty important for our productivity. Um, it's allowed us to maintain some of the highest milk production per cow that are seen across the U.S. So as we get into this change in climate where we're seeing these warmer temperatures earlier in the summer, um, it's really important for us to, to look at adapting to that and putting in cooling strategies for these cows because um, they're gonna need that cooling to uh, maintain these high levels of milk production and to dissipate the heat that comes from uh, producing these, these really good amounts of milk. Heat stress for dairy farms has always been a problem in the state. And I think what we're seeing is both a, a, an increase in the days, obviously this summer was a perfect example of record heat. We see producers really responding to something that's been around a long time, which is you know, heat stress, but it seems to be getting uh, both more frequent and more often. And the economic margins are getting tighter to where you just really have to adapt in order to make sure that you can maintain some profitability, even in those times when you have a lot of heat uh, and your cows aren't comfortable. Farming is by definition adaptable, since that's the only way to do it. And uh, there's plenty of room for adapting, right? Water use efficiency can very likely more than make up for that difference in most situations. So if you look at the, the, the climate change projections for the Northwest, projected temperature here in the Northwest is, uh, is that it's going to increase significantly. So what we see, if you look past the middle of the 21st century, is that temperatures are uh, up way above what we've seen in the past. They're so far above that the coldest years in the future are in line with or warmer than the warmest years we saw in the 20th century. So, you know, if you don't account for humidity variations across the country, you get a very a strikingly different picture about how climate change affects dairy production. Humidity contributes a lot to heat stress, as we all know from experience, um, and it's the same is true for dairy cattle. And the other reason that it's important is that the uh, average humidity, or day-to-day -day humidity for that matter, is really different across the country. So if you just compare temperatures, you get the wrong picture for what places are the most vulnerable to climate change. Like if it's five times warmer, it's not five times the loss. It's more than five times the loss. It appears that we are going to be dealing with more heat. So the fact that producers are beginning to get a taste for that now and making these decisions to adapt the technology is going to be really important for us. Our goal is really to work with uh, things that will help our producers remain profitable and successful here in Washington. So two years ago we had one freestall barn that had no co cooling in it whatsoever. And we went through a hot spell and noticed from the milk meters in the, in the barn that we were down 20 pounds per cow in that pen, but the other pen with the old style cooling was only down 10. So we knew we had to do something. And I had heard a lot about the newer technology with the soakers rather than the misters. All the rest of our pens had misters in them. And so rather than doing the same thing, and getting the same result, we decided to try something new that other dairymen in the area, as well as hotter regions of the country like California have been doing with the soakers. So we put soakers in the one pen, kind of just a quick setup to see how it went, and then we continued to follow the milk production in that pen. And as we had more heat waves and hot temperatures, that pen never seemed to drop near as much as the rest of the dairy. So for the case of dairy production, uh, you know, when there's a sensitivity that dairy cows have to warmer, more humid conditions. You're going to see that happen more often in the summer and happen farther out into the spring and fall seasons. So there's basically a longer duration of risk for those heat events. So we see, um, based on this relationship, even current, in current conditions, pretty substantial losses in summer because of heat stress. And if you look at uh, climate change, what, what we find is that those places that are currently not suboptimal for dairy cattle uh, are the places that see the greatest impacts for climate change. So not only does everywhere get worse, but the, the worst places get more worse. You know, dairymen are, are faced with a lot of choices through the years. And on any given year, there's all kinds of technology providers that come to them. 
but they are really pleased with the decisions they've made to adopt these technologies to cool their cows. They're finding out that having made that decision to put in the, the technology pays back that investment. It's definitely worth the investment for us on the, the difference in the milk we lost um, before and after. We figured it paid for itself in the first summer alone. And then you add in the reproduction benefits of it and it's, it's a quick, pretty quick payback. And, and then you just see the, the health of the cows and, and how much happier the cows seem to be.